Okay, we're back with another video, and in this video, I'm going to show you CyberSource Gateway's token management service solution. This API lets you tokenize the card information, but also it lets you tokenize the customer information, such as the shipping, the billing, and any other data that you want to pass to it so that it can store it for you. All right, so as always, I have a working demo for you guys here. Basically, I took the payment form, the basic payment form from my previous microform video, and I added some um, some customer information fields, input fields for it. This is the data that I'm gonna tokenize along with the card information. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this information to show you guys what happens when I use those in the payment. It just redirects the result page like that and it appends the payment reference and customer ID to the result page so you can reuse those and then when you hit continue shopping this time it's not gonna show those fields it's gonna show you the saved uh, or tokenized information the contact shipping the billing and the card that was used pay again is gonna pay using those you don't have to fill them again and then you can do continue shopping and you're back to it again so what we're using to implement this is this set of APIs over here, you can find this on the CyberSource website uh, in the API reference page. I'm going to link that in the description box below. Here you're going to find the APIs to tokenize the customer information, their shipping address, their payment information, or their card, how to create it, retrieve it, update it, and delete it. It's all in here. And we have it implemented already in Postman in case you want to have a look. Here is what the customer data look like when it's saved in post when it's saved in CyberSource. This is a customer ID that I retrieved. I can retrieve the one that I used. This is the one that I used. I'm going to retrieve it for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Here, the response is going to give you the token for, e for each thing that was tokenized. So this is the token for the payment details. This is the token for the shipping address. And if you go here and embed it, uh, you can find that actual data so that you don't have to retrieve it via another API call like this. This is the billing data. This is the card information. And here you can pass any other data that you want to pass up to you you can pass anything in here and this is the shipping address now i'm going to show you how to implement this in a brand new project and the first thing will be to collect this information over here and tokenize it and we're going to be doing that using this api over here i'm going to call it pay and tokenize it's just like the payment api request from before except we add the billing information and the shipping information to it along with the gwd token and here we specify that we want to create a token and here we specify the type of tokens that we want to create I want so here I'm creating a customer token which will contain the shipping address payment instrument and instrument identifier which is the token so this is the shipping details this is the billing details and the card details and this is the actual card pen tokenized in here so I'm gonna to be tokenizing everything and in the result this is gonna return the token for each I'm gonna show you guys how to generate a JWT token and pay with this later but just for the sake of demo to show you what the response for this API look like I'm just gonna use a uh, the direct card information here this is what the response look like it's gonna say authorize and it's gonna give you the tokens here so under token information you'll get your customer token billing information and card token shipping token and this is the actual token for the just the pen it's right here cool so my first step would be to implement this API request in my server side and I'm gonna do it right here so just like I do in my previous videos uh, I to implement it I'm just gonna copy a cyber source endpoint that I implemented before paste it here and I'm just gonna change the payload and the request path. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's fill this in and get rid of the hard-coded values. I got my reference for the order here. Generated this using a, a this method that gives me a random alphanumerical string given a length. Uh, I got token. Token should go here. I get this from the client side. 
Same thing with the amount and the currency. Same thing with the shipping too. I'm just gonna get this as an object from the client side. So here, just ship to. Same thing with the billing, bill to. And the rest stays the same, hard coded. Okay, I am confident that this works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this production and use it in the in the uh, client side. While this is deploying, I'm gonna show you where we're gonna be implementing the. Uh, that endpoint so we're gonna be doing it here at pay button clicked currently my react app on, the only thing that it does is that when it collects information it just print it out in the console so we're gonna grab this and pass it to our server side using that endpoint that's gonna deploy in a bit to make the payment and tokenize the card information so that's gonna be done here so here when I click pay button clicked uh, it calls the JavaScript library for the, the microform JavaScript library this one over here to tokenize the card information and then return the token here. Here I also collect the information uh, that was that the user filled in in the fields and I and I and I add them into a JSON object in the same format that the API accepts, which is this one. This is why I'm passing it straight as it is in the API uh, here here. So all I gotta do here is to call my API call and pass the information, which is the bill to ship to token and amount of currency. So we can do that here. And I can see now on my cons in the console here that my API endpoint got deployed. So let's go ahead and implement it. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now when we uh, when the payment is done, we need to redirect to the result page and pass uh, and send in the uh, the customer ID and uh, the reference as parameters in the URL of the result page. So I'm gonna do that like this. Now to know where I can get these from in the response, first let me fix the spelling for the reference. I need to look at the API request that I've done earlier, this one. So reference, we're gonna get it from client reference information code. So that's gonna be side response data code. There you go. Customer ID, we're gonna have to look under uh, token information and then under customer and it's gonna be ID. So here, customer ID, that's it. Uh, and now everything should be fine. We can go ahead and attempt a payment. Refresh. Let's get rid of the customer data. And let's do this again. Okay, let's hit pay. Oops, I messed up something in the API request. This always happens when I record. That's fine. Now give me a second to figure out what the problem is. Okay, I see the problem here. I put amount here instead of the currency, so I'm gonna fix this and redeploy the function. Let's try it again. There you go, now it's working. So this conclude the first step. Uh, I think I messed up the spelling here. In the redirection as well so <laughs> so it's okay we can keep, keep going with the video so this should be like this reference instead and now the reference is getting displayed and now when I hit continue shopping it's gonna redirect back to the payment page and adding the customer ID in the URL as a query params now this takes us to the next step which is to pull in the customer information from this customer ID and then use it in the payment form here to create a returning customer experience so let's go ahead and do that okay now to do that we need to use the API that I showed you guys earlier which is this one customer you throw in the uh, customer ID and then it will pull the information here so I just gotta implement this in my server side it's gonna be very easy to implement Okay, that's all. So I just changed it to get, I changed the request path and I'm gonna be sending the customer ID to this uh, API call by just adding it at the end of the endpoint URL and then I'm gonna get it like this from the endpoint URL. 
Uh, here I'm sending a get, I remove the payload, and I think this is good to deploy. So let's go ahead and deploy this. In the meantime, while that is deploying, I'm gonna show you where we're gonna retrieve that uh, uh, that customer ID and how we're gonna be using it. So the first step is to get it from the from the URL, and then you can do that like this: customer, and I'm gonna do URL search params. Put your URL here, get, and then customer, because it, that's what it says here, customer. Now let's test this out. I'm just gonna print it out somewhere. Here, let's go to microform. Let's go to use effect. And here, let's do console log customer. It's null. Weird. Why is it null? All right, I know why. It's because this should have been window location dot uh, search. Yeah, and that should do it. Now I'm getting the customer ID. And my endpoint for getting the customer ID has been deployed. So we can just go ahead and use this. We're gonna do this here. So here we're gonna create a new method, call it get customer and implement it and implement the API call here. Okay, let's try this out to show you guys if it works. And it's working. Here we're getting the customer data. Okay, now we need to use that data that we're getting to render the customer information here and then uh, show them to the, you know, the customer. So to do that, I want to take you some React.js magic that we've done here. So these forms that I created here for my payment page, they uh, have two states. They either input fields or the actual information that the customer have saved. So if you look at one of those components, like for example, for the contact form, here you'll see the components for filling the, uh, you know, the contact information. So this is the text fields, they're render here. Uh, but here, when you, when you pass this component default billing object, which is the same object that you'll have here in embedded, and that'll be inside default uh, payment, build to when you pass it with this object the build to object instead instead of the form appearing you're gonna get this instead this is a component that shows the information that you get in that uh, default billing object so it's just gonna display that information instead of displaying the form and that's the same case with the delivery and the same case with the billing address form this is the billing information that the user have saved and this is the forms this is the text input fields that are gonna appear when they don't have anything saved yet. And same thing with the card information. Here, inside the microform component. Uh, if the card is saved, then you're gonna see the card information. This is a component displaying the card information and the card brand. If not, you're gonna get the microform component. So. We need to use the data that we got from that get call and uh, populate the shipping information in this state variable, billing in this state variable, and the card in this state variable so that it can display accordingly. My cat is in the way. Come on, boy. So here in the use effect, we retrieve that data in customer. We need to set those state variables. First one we're gonna be setting is default billing. You need to look at your customer object to know where to get that from. You're gonna get that from embedded. And what do we say, billing? Yeah, billing. So that's gonna be side response, data, embedded, and default payment instrument. Then inside default payment instrument, you wanna access bill to. Bill to, cool. Uh, now for the shipping, set default shipping, uh, you're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be default shipping address, and then inside shipping ad the default shipping address, there will be an object called ship to. That's what you wanna use. Now the cart, set default card, it's gonna be inside payment instrument. This is payment instrument. This here, there will be an object called card. So instead of bill to, you're gonna be accessing card. Make sure my spelling for embedded is correct. So that should be good. And another thing you wanna do, you might get errors like this if you try to do this, but you're still also calling create form because you're 
JavaScript code for the microform is still going to be looking for the payment fields to put the iframe for microform on them. So when you're loading the customer details and you have no intention for collecting the card information, you need to hide that form. So if so you can do that with this condition. If no customer is retrieved, then you can call create form. Cool, now we save. Now it's working. Cool. And that's conclude the second step, which is retrieving the customer the saved customer information. Now we move on to the last step, which is using the customer information to pay. Okay, now to do that. We're going to be using this API call over here, pay with customer. And it's just like a regular payment API call, except we don't use any card information or GWT token. We just pass the customer ID, this customer ID right here. So I'm going to be implementing this. I'm going to be implementing this also in my AP, on, on my server side. So to implement this, I'm simply going to copy the pay and tokenize request that I did before this one. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to the project in the endpoint project file for my saved pay i'm gonna call it saved pay this is gonna pay using a saved customer here i'm gonna change some stuff we don't need we don't need chip to build to because it's already contained in the customer id we just need amount currency and customer id here All right, that's all, it's very simple. Now I can go ahead and deploy this to production and implement it on the client side to show you guys the result. While my endpoint is deploying, I'm gonna show you where we can implement it on the client side. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we gonna implement it here in microform under pay button clicked. Here, there's uh, right now there's the code for when you pay using a new card. So I need to contain this inside, uh, inside an if statement, so copy all of this and then do if customer then we're gonna use that api that we're deploying right now pay with saved customer id if not then we're gonna be using that code now i'm gonna be implementing my api call here Okay, and when the payment is done, we're gonna also be redirecting to the result page like always. So, so I'm gonna copy this code and use that again here with few changes. Oh, I forgot to wrap this inside a try catch statement. So the endpoint got deployed. We're almost there. We just need to do the final touch. So we need to get the customer ID. Now, here's the thing: when you pay with a with this one. You, uh, the customer ID comes from a different place in the response, in the API response. This is what it looks like when you pay with a customer. Uh, you're gonna get your customer ID again from payment information, and under payment information, you're gonna have customer ID. So it's gonna be CyberStars data, and instead of token information, payment information. Customer ID, and then this is gonna stay the same. We add them in the URL, and then we redirect the result page. That's pretty much it, let's see if it works. Hit pay. And yeah, it's working. Hit continue shopping, you're back. Information is loaded, you hit pay, it pays again. That's all. Now, let's do an end to end test. Get rid of the customer ID right from the beginning. Let's do this. And let's try use, doing this with a MasterCard card instead. Okay, pay. Information get tokenized. Payment is done. Now we return to the checkout page. We get our tokenized information here and our card, our MasterCard card here. And that's all. And this is how you can implement CyberSource tokenization management API to tokenize your customers card information, chip information, and billing information, and contact information, and any other information that you'd like to as well. You can put it in the metadata object of this API. Hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. 
I'll link everything in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe, and if you want to support the channel and get the source code in return, you can check the Patreon link in the description box below. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.